Outbreak family, how is every single one of you today? And welcome. Finally, we're back. A lot of people thought that we were done. No, we were not done. We were just, you know, some situations happened, some changes in my life. And that's why Jean Paul and I decided to just take a break. But we're back, you know, we're back with more content, like we said. We're not dead, right, Jean Paul? We're not yeah, dead. Yeah, rope break. We always kick out at two, you know. Yeah, always, yeah, yeah, exactly. Out, yeah, exactly. We're we always so. kicked out at two, but like we will have better content for you guys. So we're really excited that you're with us. So welcome one more time to the NXT UK review. And Paul, you know, a really great show, 200 episodes, and we will have every single one of them. So we're really excited about that. Maybe not the one from last week. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe we have 198 out of the 200. But you know what I mean? We actually been covering this show and you know, it had a lot of like uh, great vibes and also it had a great title match. They had a lot of also like backtracking, remembering what was what was happening, you know, throughout these 200 episodes. So Paul, did you enjoy this? Yeah, you know, the only thing I feel that, and this isn't on any part of, you know, NXT UK's fault, they just have to deal with the hands they're dealt, is the inclusion of the NXT 2.0. You know, we saw the segment with I, well, the match itself, Ivy Nile, and eh, you know, nobody really cares, and nobody really cares about really anybody else from NXT 2.0 that comes over here. Roderick Strong was good, but other than that, eh, I think everybody else kind of fell flat. But you know, no, the main exactly. thing for this, the main thing for this episode that we all focus on: loser leaves town, NXT champ, NXT UK championship on the line, and you know, it was a great match. Right there, you know, this is going to be the main event. We're going to be talking about this tonight. Ilya Dragunov, Jordan Devlin 2, the second time that these two guys fought for the biggest prize on NXT UK, the NXT UK Championship. But before that, Paul, we have like the first match, the hottest tag team under the sun, they call themselves. And of course, it's like Ashton Smith and also Carter. And they went against Gallus, the Gallus boys, you know, like this was actually a match that like you will see why in the late, in the, in the future, these guys like remember, they've been screwed. The last two times that they went against Mountain Mountain for the titles, but now actually they're trying to get another match. They're trying to get those titles no matter what. And the the more they fight, the more they I see them, they're more a cohesive unit, and they're very different with their movesets. So I like that. Yeah, I mean, like Smith and Carter, to me, I don't know if they have as I mean the crowd was into them. You know, the crowd was chanting, you know, ready and forward or whatever their catchphrase was. They were chanting it. They were into it. But I don't know if, let's say, they, well, they won this match, so they're in the triple threat, but let's say they win that. I don't know if it was, if you should have did it last time, if they were hotter last time, or if their momentum is still growing. But, you know, this was a good match with Gallus. I figured they were going to win. Just the story they're telling with Gallus, with, you know, the Coffee brothers. It, it, Joe Coffey was, he was the gangbuster. He was the leader, but now he's the one who's always losing or making the bad decisions. And he was the one who was selling most of the match. And you saw he made tag to Mark. Mark comes in, starts cleaning up. You know, he had got the hot tag, but then tags into Joe wants to tag right back in. And you're thinking, okay, but Mark trusts his brother. And unfortunately, he's the one who eats the pin. But I mean, this was a great tag match. Glad to see, like I said, Smith and Carter win. And then you, you kind of see, I thought, oh, are you going to do the split here? But what we touched on a couple of weeks ago is, are you really going to do a split between Gallus when the, the more obvious split is Mustache Mountain? But, yes. So, you know, and they probably thought the same thing. No, we're not going to do two of the same storyline. You know, at the same time, that would be stupid. So you saw Gallus. Joe was like, oh, it's my fault. I'm bullshit. Mark I need time. Like, no, you're you good. Know? You know, it's okay. So he's going to be away. Everybody was, you know, they were legit. They were brothers. So, you know, and this is... Uh, interesting because it's not so obvious now we got to see kind of how they play it out no oh, yeah it's going to be like a different story a different beginning from Gallus. we're gonna we didn't hear from Wolfgang yet so we also have to hear what happens with coffee like you said like he's going to be away what's going to happen if he comes back maybe he will be healed there's a lot of good things going on but like you said it was about time to split him up just because you know they've been attacked forever or a group yeah. forever and they need a fresh start all of them i mean they've tried in there also in the nxt UK, like the Heritage Cup division, they haven't been able to win anything. So let's see what the new beginning calls for them. But like you said, these guys, before we go into it, these guys are added into the triple threat match for the tag titles. So this is great news for them. This is the last time or in third time that they're going to challenge for those titles. We'll see if they can win it. Remember August 2021, we did this. Jump on myself, cover NXT TakeOver. That's when Ilya Dragunov dethroned Gunter or like Walter for us and became the NXT UK champion. Great stuff. Also, like they were remembering all the transitions 
that like the NXT UK brand have that to NXT. I would like also like main roster, pretty deadly, you know, our boys, they're the NXT champions. So that's really cool. And I mean, that was like good to, like, for them to showcase that. Kind of yeah, like saying, hey, we developed these guys. I think they showed like Rhea Ripley, uh, Piper Niven, of course, you know, no Tony Storm, nobody like that. I think Kaylee Ray, they, they, they showed her NXT UK stuff, but they couldn't show anything from NXT 2.0 because she's absolute joke on that. Oh yeah, and you know, so. she has a new name also in NXT 2.0, it's not Kaylee Ray anymore, it's like another thing, yeah. Yeah, well, because Vince said, anybody who uses their name from the indies, which I'm sure all these guys is pretty much their indie names, you know, they said that he's changing them, so. Uh, you know, a lot of incentive for guys to go over there. But no, this was cool, and you will say, for the most part, not 100% because we just touched on Kaylee Ray, but for the most part, a lot of these NXT UK guys are at least, well, okay, Butch, you know, but, you know Pete Dunne, but, you know. Can somebody, can somebody like, drive a, you know, fine Butch? Yeah, for, for, for another, you know, for, for the most part, these NXT UK guys are being presented pretty well. So, you know, it, it, it's a good thing for them. And we always said this is the best brand and they have the, some of yes. the best talent. And it's not even, you know, he would have considered this like developmental. This is, you know, oh, a brand yeah. that like delivers the best product right here. And, you know, remember we talked about last time that we did a video, we said like, who's writing NXT UK? Because Shawn Michaels is not in charge anymore. He's the guys from Progress, from the company, from the British company that they have also like, you know, their whole like wrestling yeah. you know, um, territory or like company, like they are the ones in charge of writing this, the next stories and everything. And they're doing a great job. They've been following the same path that Triple H, Shawn Michaels left. So it's really cool. And I like that. You know, because like oh, you, yeah. you, you know, yeah, they're doing a great job. Change. We always, yeah, exactly. So yeah, like, this, was, this was really cool. So you know, Paul, tell me a little bit about the A Kid because he's back from like losing all these matches in NXT 2.0, and he's gonna challenge Charlie Dempsey under like the Heritage Cup rules. And you know, the A Kid, like you said, the one thing he likes of is like the charisma. Like at least people believe in him. I mean, in the ring, he's so he's such a great wrestler. But unfortunately, the personality, the guy, does not make you believe. That you want to see him fight even but like in this one i'm rooting for charlie dempsey yeah i mean like a kid is one of those wrestlers who is counterproductive isn't the right word but when he cuts a promo you want to see him less and then when he has a match you're like okay man this guy's awesome so it's like he takes two steps forward and then one step back with every promo he cuts so i mean no i knew this was leading to the heritage cup rules and i think they're gonna have a good match and you know, maybe it ends in a draw. I don't know. Maybe it goes to the sixth round and, you know, I don't really know how they're going to do it, but I don't really know if they're just going to beat A-Kid again. But I do yeah. agree Dempsey can't lose either. So this is going to be interesting. This is one, you know, I'm looking forward to. Dempsey's the future, you know, like this is the, this is the for example, the main guy in the familiar for me. Theo man, the leader, yes, but like, I mean, we want to see Charlie Dempsey. Oh, and yeah. in this one, A-Kid, you know, like he, he has his time. He won the champion, you know, he was the first just cup champion. He challenged Walter, he challenged Dragunov. I don't want to see that. Let, you know, let him win. Let Charlie Dempsey get the win. That's more important to see. We got to see, like I said, Evie Nile, or Ivy Nile, like you said, like she was the one that like went against Nina Samuels and she gets the win. At least, you know, NXT 2.0. This girl is actually interesting to watch with what she can do in the future. Unfortunately, all the members from Diamond Mine, even Malcolm Bivens are out. <laughs> the only one left is like the Creed Brothers and also Roderick Strong. But also Roderick Strong, there was reports, Paul, that like he had asked for his release. But they denied that because they know that like, what is he going to do? Just reform the Undisputed Era on AEW. So that that's why they're like, nope. But at least they're trying to do something with Ivy Nile. She's good. I like her. And, you know, the Dragon Sleeper that she did, that was also cool. And also applying more pressure towards the end. And Nina Samuels, you know, she has the show. She's just, uh, you know, one, one girl that, like they used to enhance other people. Yeah. And, you know, Nina Samuels, she's always been used in this role. So I didn't hate this too much. And I do agree out of all the people you see on NXT 2.0. I mean, she's no Nikita Lyons or anybody like that. But, you know, she, there is some sort of potential here. I mean, she has the physique maybe not tall as you would like to see she's a little short even for a female wrestler but you know still an impressive showing here it's just the thing i don't like and we saw i believe before this too lash legend was walking and she kind of oh, yeah. pulled like amelia just like oh amelia McKenzie. Dad, like you're bullshit and she's like no i don't do this you know so th they're just smashing the nxt 2.0 people over like yeah they're high class and these uk people are like commoners like losers we just beat them in all the matches you know they're beneath us and stuff and even the baby faces they send over are kind of cocky kind of you know so 
I don't, yeah, like, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't care for this crossover unless you're sending the Braun Breakers to go against Dragonoff or something like that. To me, it's just, just, it's just it's you know, your we don't know what to do with these guys. Oh, you know, yep. they're still under contract. Then we send them to the UK so they can learn something. I read a, a report call that, like, remember Wesley, the thing that happened, you know, he doesn't have a tag partner. A guy that just came from NXT UK is going to be his new tag partner. That's going to be Nathan Frazier. They're going to try to make them a tag team. That way they can do something with both of them. Because, unfortunately, I guess Nathan Frazier doesn't have that many believers in, uh, here, right here in the United States. But we'll see what happens. And, you know, next week we're going to he see... He was somebody who be... never should have left NXT UK. Oh, yeah. You know, no it, you know that's the kind of things that like you don't want to do, but unfortunately, like I guess they have to happen. And we're going to see this next week. We're going to see the dog collar match. Eddie Dennis against Walborn. This is going to be good. Hopefully, they use a little bit of like blood because I mean, a dog collar match calls for it. You know, this is time with stipulations. I don't know if we have we ever seen blood on this show. No, no. Uh, yeah, I mean, I really don't see it. I mean, these guys. No, I mean, we liked Eddie Dennis. You know, Wild Boar, eh. You know, if you want to hear my opinions on him, listen to our previous NXT UK videos. But th to me, this match, I am, I do think it's cool. Maybe, ex again, excited is not the right word, but okay, I'm looking forward to see it. But I don't know if this calls for blood. It's not, you know, CM Punk and MJF level feud or anything. So I don't know if this really calls for blood. It's not like Piper see, and yeah. Valentine. <laughs> yeah, I see him kind of being a scaredy, you know, pussy running around. And Wild Boar's going to beat him up. Going to be a ton of interference and everything. Because it's a dog collar, so no DQ. So this will probably be the match, the match that's a little bit of a mess. But we got to wait and see. Maybe it'll prove me wrong. Maybe I'll really enjoy it. Yeah, it could be something, but that is going to be one of the main events of next week. But now let's focus on, like we said, like the main event, the championship match, Ilya Dragunov and Jordan Devlin. I did enjoy this a lot. And Paul, like, I want you to tell me, like, were you thinking that like, a title switch here? You know, was it better than the first match that they had? I think, I think that, like, they did a really great job here. And especially when they did that little twist, when they gave that little, like, bone at us that, like, that's in this, in the match. You know, Ilya Dragunov had lost the championship. That was really cool also. So, uh, yeah. to me, you know, these guys are like, they have a lot of chemistry, you know, build almost the same. So, that calls for like a good match. Yeah, this match is great. And you and I have been saying too, like, Jordan Devlin versus Walter, not super believable. But Dragunov yes. versus in Devlin, that's more believable. So, like, okay, you know, this is the match we wanted to see. We saw the first one, the empty arena match. That was, you know, all on the outside. That was all over the place. You know, using handcuffs and everything else involved. This was just a straight-up match. And, I mean, this thing was great. Jordan Devlin, when he, you know... He was in control. He was healing to the crowd. You know, he was showing to be in cocky, but again, always in control. But dragging off, he's so tough. He's so strong. He fights back, and he had that injured neck. There was one time when he just went to spring off the ropes, and when he hit the ropes, it came back and it hit his neck, and he sold it like he got shot by a bullet. And you saw Devlin kind of stand there like, "What the hell?" And then he went and put on a move because he probably thought, "Damn, I didn't know he was gonna sell it like this legit." But, I mean, again, these guys are so great. That, again, when you watch them wrestle, you forget that it's a work. You know what I mean? You, just, you, you actually think, exactly. okay, these guys are really in there, like, wrestling each other for legit. And, and that's I the mean, beauty of it. When you forget yeah. that it is a work. Exactly. Like, when you actually lose that idea, when you just, like, don't remember that this is a work. For example, when he hits the devil inside right here. You know, really good combination. Hits it really well. And then... It pins him, but like, see, Ilya is able to put like the full right leg on the on top of the rope, and nobody sees. But see, any other match, you know this, Paul. Any other match, they will actually say, "Oh, it's, it's over." You know, and they don't even care. The title like changes hands. It's fine. You know, nobody gives a damn. But in this one, Johnny Saints comes out, and you know, here he's celebrating. Uh, Jordan Devlin thinks that he's the champion. Everybody, even like on commentary, like Nigel McGuinness was like trying pretty much like, you know, he had a big boner right there because he was like selling that like whatever, like whoever. But then, you know, Johnny Sane comes out and he's like, no, 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 no. At least we have a, a, you know, fair general manager here. And he's the one that restarts the match. And after that, it was just a good combination out of, like, both of them. Really going at it, like, the Moscow Torpedo, the chops, like, you know, the elbows, all of those things. And also, like, uh, Devlin hit, like, a beautiful, uh, even like a Panama Sunrise or, like, a Canadian Destroyer. You know, nothing is still done. But, you know, Ilya Dragunov. Kind of like the, more, the Torpedo Moscow is most similar like the Claymore. You ever realize that? Because he like, you know, he goes out of nowhere and runs and boom, hits you and that's it. 
Yeah, he. I forget what Devlin kind of had him set up for something, and he dodged. The 450. He hit the 450. Yeah, yeah, and he like boom, you know, hit the ropes, and like you said, he Drew can set it up the three, two, one, or he can just boom, like hit it. Not like an RKO, but he can kind of hit it, you know, and it surprises you. And same thing with this, because all Dragunov needs to do is just jump and throw himself forward and kind of do like a twisting, spinning headbutt. Like, yeah, I disappear done. like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you know, he hit it, and. You know, great match. You know, we could talk about it move for move, but go do yourself a, a favor. It's on Peacock. Go watch it. But, I mean, this was great. And the one thing, when they did the screwy finish, I liked that because I thought you can continue this. And then I thought there's no way they're going to put the title on Devlin. I knew it was either going to be they, they would have to do some kind of undisputed thing and they wrestle again or they're both champs or it would what would happen they restart the match and they just let dragon off keep it and i'm thinking okay you know this they're going to take devlin put him on 2.0 again because i mean the guy besides his his height is the only thing you could minus from him he's a great talker he has a good look he can wrestle like nobody's business I mean, he's short. That's the only criticism I think you could have for this guy. But, you know, maybe you know, he's not going to NXT 2.0. The only thing I thought here with a screwy finish, he could come in next week. Johnny Saint, this is bullshit. I won the match. I'm not leaving because I didn't lose. I won. The ref counted to three, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they do something again. Now, that would be kind of crappy to get out of it, but... I mean, we're losing Nathan Frazier. We're losing all these guys. You know, what the hell do I want to lose Jordan Devlin again? And then he's going to be like Jordan. You know, he's going to be like John, you know, something on NXT 2.0. He's going to have a different name. He's going to be wearing like going against Tony hat or some bullshit. Yeah, he's going to be a completely different person and it's going to suck. Oh, yeah. No, like you said, that's Hopefully, the he does. Hopefully they do what I said and, you know, he stays here and finds a way out of that stipulation because he didn't lose, you know, or something. But no. Dragunov still the champ. Great match, great main event. And I, I gotta say, I think I like it more than the lights out. This one to me was like better. I mean the like the speed of Not it lights out, like excuse me. Empty arena, empty arena. The empty arena match, but this was a lot faster. And also like the combinations, how like the, the sequences between the one. You know, like they are like really good. They are glued with each other. Like they know what like the one is gonna do. The other one already sees the move, like they keep going, the pace yeah. is really fast. I really enjoy this. Like you said, I don't think that like Jordan Devlin has any chance to be successful on NXT 2.0. Not because of anything that he's done, but like it's just because the way that like they tarnish everything that they've done in the past. Now he he's one of those guys who, despite what you think of the booking of Walter, he's still over. He's still smashing jobbers. He's still beating people up on SmackDown. He's not coming out there dressed as a clown on a unicycle. He's not Butch. You know what I mean? There's still a little bit of credibility left to Walter. So I think Devlin might be in the same boat. He might be a little bulletproof where even if they change his name, but they don't change how he acts and how he cuts a promo, I think he'll still be over. It will be a little bit better, savable, but like you said, if you go to Butch, you know, I mean, I don't care how much money you throw at me, but like I went from like being like the main yeah. horse in NXT UK, you know, even throughout the pandemic, well, Walter was the champ, but I mean, in the beginning, you know, before after like Tyler Bate was the champion, then it was just all of that be done. And now Butch, you know, like you put like no, great and, matches. And, you know, I watched SmackDown for, I, I didn't catch it the past couple of weeks. I watched it, you know, this past Friday. And when you see him running away through the crowd and they're like, where's Butch? We can't commentary selling it like he's a lost little kid in a supermarket. And I'm like, this, this sucks. See, Pete Dunn has to be like, okay, I'll just wait. It's legit. I'm only like 27, 28. However, he's young. So Yo, he's, he's like, pretty young. Yeah, probably a little younger than that. Probably 26. You know, oh, yeah. like, I'm not, I'm out of here. Well, you know, he wants to make money. He can make the money and later on then go maybe. Yeah, you know, I will say AEW is no guarantee that like they're going to move oh, you no. good. You know, Kid Lee is a big case. You know, Ethan Page is another case that is lost. So like AEW, no, maybe like again NXT UK or maybe like Progress. There's other ways for you to get over. If you guys don't believe us, talk to Matt Cardone. The guy portrays a joke on WWE now legit. You, I, Impact, I think the way, legit, the way to get over. The, the, what we're seeing is the way to get over is almost to be like it, wrestling was. 40, 50 years ago where, Territories. yeah, you, you might have a, a home base, a home promotion territory, but hey, I'll be here a little bit. 
but then I'm going to keep going everywhere else and make money too. That's why guys like Cardona and all these guys who are released and on the Indies signed to Impact, that, that Impact will be, yeah, you want to work here, you want to work there, you know, whatever. They might not be on WrestleMania, but I think people might respect them and like them a lot more than some other people. And also they feel better because they're actually building a yeah. future for themselves. And WWE, at least they're going to pay attention. They don't like Matt Cardona just because he, he gets over him over you know by himself but like for example morrissey or big Cass, oh they were like oh when he debuted and went against warlow they're like oh my god he's so changed he's a different man we'll see if they they get him back we'll see but at least you know in this situation we're gonna close with saying Ilya dragon retains yeah. he's actually now on wwe 2k22 for you guys to like enjoy and play with him and you know thank you so much and then we get apologies for like not being here but like we i had to there are some changes in my life but we're back see we promise that we will be and double or nothing it will be right here on robert and also like more dynamite more nxt uk so paul where can they find us guys make sure you follow us on all of our social media rope break on facebook the og rope break on twitter original rope break on instagram twitch and TikTok, and of course right here on youtube the home of the number one podcast in the youtube wrestling community and you and me have one more thing that is left to say and that is uh... Uh...